Both pipe wrenches and channel locks are extremely handy tools. They're versatile and they can be used for all kinds of things, but typically nobody really shows us how to use these things properly. In fact, I've come up with three mistakes that DIYers tend to make when using these tools, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to use these properly, take advantage of the amazing teeth on these things so that you can use these to their maximum potential. Now, these are particularly good at grabbing onto pipes themselves, as well as stripped nuts, stripped bolts, or anything else that's kind of hard to get a grip on. They have teeth that are designed specifically for this job, and we'll talk more about when to use these and when not to use these and how to use them right. The first mistake we tend to make is actually using these where they don't belong. For example, on this quarter turn valve right here, if I wanted to get this nut off, I could use the pipe wrench to do so. Just fit it on here like this and start to turn, especially if I can secure the top of it so it's not spinning, then I can get this thing right off and that's not gonna be a problem. But the issue here is, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm already introducing some little teeth marks and some Mars into here when I really don't need to have that. What I really need is to grab the right tool for the job. If you can use a wrench for this, that's ideal. I actually don't have one handy right now that's this exact size. So if you need to use an adjustable wrench, that can fit on there really nicely. So I'm gonna use that. I'll use another one to hold Hold on to this piece so it doesn't twist around and then it's easy enough to get that piece off. So always use a wrench, take the extra couple of minutes it takes to do that. If it has a nice fitting on here, the sides are smooth and you can grab onto it easily, then use a wrench every single time. If not, if these are stripped, if it's loose, if you're just grabbing a pipe itself, that's where the pipe wrench and in some cases the channel locks are the perfect tool. The second mistake that DIYers tend to make with channel locks and pipe wrenches is using them backwards. There's no better way to say it. These have one direction that they're intended to be used and they can be used in one direction for clockwise or tightening and the other direction for counterclockwise or loosening. So check this out. If I've got a horizontal pipe here like this one, for example, and I wanna grab onto that pipe, if I put it in this direction, it's gonna hold itself like this. So that means I'm gonna be turning it counterclockwise and as I push down on this, it will make it really easy to turn. Same thing in the other direction. What I don't wanna do is try to use it this way to go clockwise. You might be able to get it, but most of the time it's just gonna have a tendency to slip. Instead, flip it around, put it like this and let gravity be your friend here. Look at this, all I have to do is just touch this really lightly and it'll do the tightening job for me. So that's how you know you've got it in the right direction. There's a few other clues that we have in here to make this really easy. And if you're ever not sure which way it goes, you can check out the teeth as well. The teeth on this bottom piece here, the fixed jaw, these will actually point in the direction you should be turning. So these ones, you can see there's a little sharp or a small angle on the bottom. And on this direction heading that way, there's a longer tooth angle, like a little hill building up that way. So they're kind of pointing that direction right along here. So we can use that to our benefit and just use that to understand we need to be turning that same way. We're going to be turning this way like that. So these ones are going to want to grip down on it. These ones on the other hand are pointing the other way. They're also helping us figure out what direction to go. Oftentimes we don't realize but channel locks actually have the exact same teeth set up. So again you can see right here these teeth are meant to be pushing this way. They're grabbing on that way while these ones are pushing that way. So again with minimal effort I can actually just loosen this it's gonna turn the whole thing first before it loosens because that was on there pretty tight. And then just a little squeeze and off I go. If I try to go in the opposite direction, I'm relying more on my hand strength to clamp this thing down with the teeth going in the opposite direction and it's more likely to do that. It's more likely just to slip right off there because the teeth aren't meant to go in that direction. The third mistake that I wanna talk about is one that I've actually been demonstrating in this video. Did you catch it? It's not anything to do with the teeth or the rotation, but it's about how the tool sits in conjunction with the pipe or the fitting that you're working with. Now, what I've been doing is I've been sitting way up here like this and grabbing onto it that way, which can work and often does, but the proper thing to do is maintain three points of contact on here. By opening these jaws up a little bit, I can get this to sit all the way down here. There's three points of contact at this point. I've got my fixed jaw, the throat, and the hook jaw, all of those teeth and the throat are all in contact, which is what I want. Now what happens here is it gives me a much better grasp onto it, and then as long as I've got my tightness setting just right, then again, really easy just to push this into place. Now as this starts to tighten up, watch what happens right here. I can just walk it back like that. Walk it back, more force. Walk it back, more force. So it does a great job because it has those three points of contact, it makes it really easy to take all the work off of me and put it on the tool. 
The reason this works is because of this right here. As we look at the tool, it's got a loose pivot right here and that's part of the design. This thing was actually designed in the 1930s. It's about 90 years old and the inventor actually put that pivot in it for a couple of reasons. One, it allows us to walk it back like we just talked about, walk it back like that. And it does that just by kind of wobbling its way backwards. And the other thing is pretty cool is once it's locked on there like this, you can just push this and that will release it just like that. It's a really handy little feature that a lot of people don't take advantage of. This is a really simple and clever design. There's a reason it hasn't changed in almost 100 years. The same principle applies for the channel locks. Obviously there's no thumb release or anything like that, but you wanna grab it all the way down to the throat, make as much contact there as you can, and then it's gonna be a lot easier to tighten from there. Rather than trying to grab it with the ends of the jaws like this, or even somewhere in the middle, just see if you can grab it all the way down as much as you can. That'll give you maximum contact with the jaw teeth, and then you can twist and move it as necessary. I'm sure you've noticed by now that I've been calling these channel locks throughout the video, but that's actually not accurate. Channel lock is just a brand name. So this is like calling facial tissues Kleenex or a search engine Google it, just Google it, right? So that's actually just the, the brand that came up with it and they still sell these today, but they're also manufactured by most other tool brands. So these are called slip joint pliers and the specific kind is called tongue and groove pliers. And I've got a whole list of other names that you can see on the screen here that are used as a title for this type of pliers. So whatever you call it, just make sure you're avoiding these few mistakes, both with the channel locks and with the pipe wrench. While you're checking out plumbing tips, you might wanna see six mistakes that DIYers make with this stuff. Teflon tape gets misused all the time and misapplied. So you can check that video out right here. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.